oceans, the cradle of life, and the origin of all creatures, and also a treasure house for human beings. The rainbow-like surprise on the seabed is, of course, the coral reef. Here, coral, seaweed, and anemones catch the eye, striking every possible pose. And besides this, there are schools of brightly colored fairy-like fish passing to and fro, getting everyone's attention. The patterns on their bodies closely resemble those of circus clowns, so they are known as the clownfish. After the animated movie Finding Nemo became a box office hit, Nemo became a hero of the ocean in the eyes of children. But the truth behind this rise in popularity is one of the mysteries of marine ecology. In all, there are 28 kinds of clownfish. Most are distributed over the Pacific Ocean and Indian Ocean, especially where the tropical current passes. Because this area is very suitable for anemones, it has become the clownfish's main habitat. Taiwan's east, south, and offshore islands, the sea is clear and there are many coral reefs, ideal for the clownfish. At present, there are five kinds of clownfish found in the seas around Taiwan. Amphiprion polymenus's common name is the saddleback anemone fish. It is quite rare. Amphiprion ocellaris's common name is the false clown anemone fish. It is found in the east and south and offshore islands of Taiwan. Amphiprion peridurion's common name is the pink anemone fish. It too lives in the seas to the east and south. Amphiprion clarkia's common name is Clark's anemone fish. These are the most common variety in Taiwan. Amphiprion fernatus's common name is the tomato anemone fish. It appears mainly off the east coast of Taiwan. Clownfish live only where the anemone lives. Their relationship is like that of tenant and landlord. There are more than 1,000 kinds of anemone in the world, of which about 10 coexist with clownfish. Oddly enough, none of these 10 grows in the Atlantic Ocean so there are no clownfish there. Most fish in the sea carefully avoid anemones, but clownfish swim casually among them. Because the clownfish's body is covered with mucus, the anemone is tricked into thinking these fish are part of itself. The anemone thus refrains from attacking clownfish with its sting cells. In return for the anemone's goodwill, the clownfish helps to clean away the parasites and wastes on the anemone's body and in the surrounding area.
The close relationship between clownfish and anemones limits their living and breeding area. To assure continuous breeding, the clownfish has evolved an unusual sex change ability. There are usually three to five clownfish in an anemone family. The largest fish will be the female, the second largest, the male. The smaller fish are as yet too young to breed. If the female fish dies or disappears, the male will change gender to female over a period of about two weeks. The third largest fish in the group then becomes a male with breeding ability. This means that clownfish reproduction is regulated and status goes by body size. When breeding, clownfish spawn on the reef beside anemones, which then serve to protect it. After finding a place to spawn, the father and mother clownfish remove algae and sediment from it with their mouths and brush the gravel away with their tails to create a clean and comfortable nursery for their children. Spawning has begun. After the female fish lays eggs, the male fish will come back to emit sperm, swaying back and forth so that the eggs can be fertilized. Unlike the strategy of other fish, which disperse their eggs widely, the clownfish lays a smaller number which adhere to the reef. With the care of the male fish and the protection afforded by the anemone, the hatching and survival rates of these eggs are higher than if they were dispersed. Before the baby clownfish hatch, the father and mother fish take care of the eggs day and night without resting. They use their pectoral fins to move the water about so that the oxygen content of the water increases and the waste products of the embryos dissipate promptly. They also use their mouths to remove sterile or dead eggs. To keep the fertilized eggs from being attacked by other fish, the mother fish patrols the area. The father fish concentrates on protecting the eggs. Both devote themselves to their progeny. Look, the baby fish are breaking out of their eggs one by one. When just hatched, the clownfish is colorless and has no resistance to anemone stings. It has to wait until its body acquires color to be able to coexist with the anemone. The colors and stripes of the clownfish change as the fish ages. Bright colors and unique shapes have made the clownfish very popular. Far into the night, the aquarium workers are still busy. Brightly colored tropical fish shine beautifully under the lights, and the clownfish is the most conspicuous of them all. With the aquarium industry growing rapidly, the price of clownfish is rising rapidly. Today, 
90% of the clownfish we see in an aquarium are from tropical seas. Unlimited catching has posed an unprecedented challenge for wild clownfish and their habitat. Since the wild clownfish in Taiwan reproduce more slowly than people capture them, a population crisis arose, which the Eastern Marine Biology Research Center was asked to deal with. After many years of study and experimentation, the Eastern Research Center has found the most suitable method to breed and raise clownfish. It has planned and then built a model facility for breeding and raising clownfish. There, automatic controls and biotechnology allow clownfish to lay eggs the year round. It has thus created the ideal environment for the continual breeding and growth of clownfish. The breeder's spawning room in the model factory is an elaborately built space for breeding pairs of clownfish. Researchers observe and make detailed records daily to keep close tabs on the spawning and hatching. Human-raised clownfish have a much higher survival rate than captured fish, and the material for their food is easier to obtain. The model clownfish production unit is capable of a steady output, and it has the leading position in its field in Taiwan. It thus brings a high economic return, with world sales standing at around $100 million yearly. In cooperation with industry, it has reduced the cost and risk of breeding the fish and cut down on the number caught in the wild, benefiting both the survival of the clownfish and the interests of industry. The Institute has created a win-win situation. The lovable clownfish, with its symbiotic relationship with the anemone, its ability to switch gender, and its hard work to protect its eggs, is a good example to educate people about the oceans. In order to increase popular knowledge about the clownfish, the East Research Center has built the first aquarium of anemone fish in Taiwan. Through lively explanations and exhibitions of the various types of clownfish, the center educates visitors through entertainment and shares its knowledge with everyone. Research on breeding clownfish in Taiwan has been a success. It has had economic benefits and has succeeded in preserving the fish. The hard work and accomplishments of the Fisheries Research Institute make it a valuable asset to Taiwan. We invite everyone to share and witness our effort and diligence.